This is the almost timely newsletter for the week of December 4th, 2022. What's on my mind this week? It works if you use it correctly. Even before the uh, <clears throat> management change, uh, there was a bounty of people on Twitter making very bold, mostly false claims uh, that masks, you know, the things we wear out in public, these things, Masks don't work to stop diseases like COVID. These po folks would say all kinds of things, cite all kinds of reasons why uh, why these things, they, from their perspective, didn't work. All sorts of explanations, almost all of which were uh, totally unfounded in basic science, about why filtering the air you breathe was ineffective at stopping disease and why we shouldn't bother. Now, Lest you think that I mistakenly copy-pasted uh, from my pandemic newsletter, which is a whole separate thing. Uh, it's not. Bear with me for a minute. Last week, when I was taking care of my COVID-positive parents, I was resolute in my belief that wearing a heavy-duty respirator in a hostile environment, this thing, was scientifically sound. And I'm pleased to say that I was completely correct. Uh, I have been testing myself since I came back and have tested negative every single time. What I did to stay safe worked. Now, the thing is, the bad science crowd isn't entirely wrong. Mostly wrong, but not entirely wrong. There are conditions in which masks don't work. When you wear a mask, if it does not form a good seal over your nose and mouth, it doesn't work as well. It's like having a screen door on your porch that you leave partway open, and then you wonder why there's mosquitoes everywhere in your house, right? There's nothing wrong with the screen door itself, but your implementation of it was uh, less than effective. When you buckle your seatbelt so that it's entirely underneath you, and, you know, you're sitting on it and not over your body, and then, then crash your car and get flung through the windshield, uh, the seatbelt didn't work, right? No, of course I would do. The seatbelt worked fine. It just didn't stop you from going face first through the glass uh, because you used it completely incorrectly. The crowd of folks who boldly claim that masks don't work, how well do you suppose they use them? Do you suppose they use the best mask available to them uh, and ensure that each time they put it on that it's sealed correctly? Or do you suppose, you know, they kind of wear it haphazardly, perhaps not even covering their nose and their mouth? You know, I've seen plenty of people wear the masks like this, like this, this, this doesn't help. Right? This, this is ineffective. You know, or people like this, right, wearing it, their, their nose is uncovered. Um, I would wager that a large percentage of people who claim these things don't work fall in that category. Okay. So what does this have to do with marketing and business, right? That's why you're here. Substitute masks for the marketing strategy, tactic, or channel of your choice. Do any of these statements sound familiar? Oh, uh, email's dead. You know, or social media doesn't work. Facebook's not working. Instagram's not working. Uh, SEO is a waste of time. Direct mail is a waste of money. Um, I'll take a moment to be snarky. Anyone who claims something is dead usually trying to sell you something. And the moment we detect a conflict of interest, we should feel perfectly free to discard whatever that person is saying because, it, yeah, it's a conflict of interest. We can ignore that person. So these statements, though, such and such is dead or it doesn't work, should absolutely sound familiar, right? We've all heard people say that. People have been making bold claims about every possible marketing method, that nothing works, everything is dead. And yet the global economy seems to be chugging along just fine. Businesses are making record profits. So something's got to be working, right? Here's the reality. Like masks, marketing strategies and tactics don't work if you use them incorrectly. Right? Like masks, if you don't know what you're doing, you're better off asking for help than simply giving up, especially if something important like, you know, your job or your bonus is on the line. Was it the case that the tool failed or did we fail to use it properly? <clears throat> Let's take the example of saying, you know, SEO is a waste of time. SEO is dead. I've heard uh, quite a few people make the claim, yeah, SEO is, 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 is useless now. It's, you know, don't waste your time. Is that actually true? It is true that Google keeps more clicks um, for itself than it ever has before. This is something that uh, Rand Fishkin spotted back in 2018 and it continues to be the case. And yet... 
when I look at the client reports that I process every month, dozens and dozens of different companies, every industry, all the different company sizes, <clears throat> on an unpaid basis, Google is almost always the single largest unpaid traffic driver. Every month, organic, Google organic, topping the list. Is SEO dead? If it is, then why is Google topping the charts for unpaid marketing uh, traffic sources at like 34 out of 40 clients? Right? <laughs> Clearly, it, it is working, right? Um, it is working for a large number of people. If it's not working for you, are you using it correctly? Uh, what about social media? Uh, my former high school classmate, Gary Vaynerchuk, frequently and correctly, correctly says that you cannot claim social media is undermining democracy in one sentence and then say you can't sell you know, widgets in the next sentence. Those two sit sentences together don't make any sense. right? It either is a powerful tool that is endangering you know, democracy or free speech or whatever, or... It doesn't work, and you can't even sell a, you know, a tube of lipstick on it. Which one is it? Um, if a tool isn't working for us, chances are we're not using it correctly. Sometimes it's because we don't know how to use the tool properly. Right? Other times, even if we know how to operate the tool well, we're using the wrong tool for the job. Right? Are you using an acquisition channel for retention? Are you using uh, an engagement channel for acquisition? Are you using uh, a, a particular medium when your audience isn't there? Right? A frying pan is an effective tool, right? Nobody doubts that frying pans work, um, but they're not so good at making soup. Right? A blender is an effective tool, not so good for making steak. Right? Sometimes the tool is fine, we're just using it wrong. The reason I'm talking about this is this is the time of year and we start to look back at the year that was, start to examine what we've done and make our best attempt at you know, looking at the year ahead for planning purposes. The temptation will be strong to declare certain strategies, certain tactics, certain methods. Um, you know, that didn't work. So a critical part of our declaration is determining whether or not it, something didn't work because we didn't use it right. right. We didn't use it correctly. Here's the critical part. Once you're free to admit that perhaps you didn't use a tool correctly, and I do this all the time. I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't use things correctly a lot of the time. But once you can admit that, that opens the door to learning how to use it better. It frees us to say, okay, we still got a lot to learn, so let's dig in. Rather than defending a point of view or a strategy or a system that didn't work, right? or blaming, shifting the blame to the tool instead of saying, yeah, that, that's, we didn't use the tool the way it was intended to be used or the way that we know works well for that tool. So that's what's on my mind this week. What happened in the news this week? Well, lots of uh, good stuff this week. Uh, I did a piece on the power of forecasts. Go check that out. Uh, also talked about collectivism versus individualism, bad research, holiday predictive forecasts, weakened communities, Twitter ad targeting. So lots to check out. I'm also legitimately excited. One of my favorite pieces of content marketing is coming out over the next 10 days. Um, we've already got done two days. It is the annual 12 days of data. This is a, uh, a 12 part series. It looks back at the year that was we're underway. Now day one was private social media networks in 2022. Day two was Instagram for brands. We've got more stuff on Instagram, top content of the year, uh, all sorts of fun things to look forward to. So make sure that you are staying tuned. Check the links in the newsletter uh, and subscribe to the Trust Insights blog because that's where I'm posting those things. Uh, let's check out what's happening in jobs. We have lots of good stuff this week. Adobe Analytics Implementation Consultant at Harnum, Analytics Engineer at Project 3, Analytics Manager at Omnicom, Business Unit Lead at Swiss Devs, Data Storytelling and Expert, Junior Data Engineer, Junior Storytelling Expert, Junior Web Analytics, and web analytics specialists. These are five different jobs at a company called ScandaWeb. Uh, digital data analyst, AQ, AKQA. I'm going to say that one five times fast. Uh, and digital product analyst at Brooklyn Data Company. So lots of uh, people hiring. 
uh, in advertisements. Only a couple more weeks left on the 2023 Marketing Planning Guide. If you have not gotten your copy of it, it is free. It's a quarter-by-quarter, week-by-week planning guide for you to build your 2023 marketing calendar based on when people are going to be in the office or not. So make sure you grab your copy of that. That's going to go away January 1, because at that point, you know, we have to redo the forecast. Uh, in the news this week, uh, Mozilla acquires Active Replica and is trying to uh, make its own foray into the metaverse. Let's say something here. Um, if you want to know if something's got legs, if you want to know something's going to take off, check to see who's using it and getting a lot of success early on, particularly in highly unregulated industries. That's a good first place to see if it's something is worth investing your time in. Maybe I'll do an, uh, an episode of um, the, day, the, the Daily Show on that, just so that uh, you can see more details what, what that's about. Um, how to make better workspaces for your content marketing team, balancing paid and organic strategies, uh, some stuff on YouTube SEO, OpenAI de debuts ChatGPT, which is their open chatbot, plus uh, their GPT DaVinci model, which, by the way, I've been using this past week a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I've cranked out rap lyrics um, about analytics, uh, love poems about analytics. Uh, I've done horoscopes about analytics. <laughs> so uh, the tools are getting really, really good and a lot of fun to use. Definitely go check those out. Uh, how to calculate ratios in R, advances in data analytics. Uh, we have the future of AI is flexible, reusable models. And then in the, in the fun stuff, some things from uh, the Nag Hammadi Library, the Gospel of Thomas. Uh, can you measure other planets' gravity on Earth? And how to invite uh, your alts to your World of Warcraft guild if you've, uh, you're a guild of one. So that is the news for this week uh, again go check out the 12 days of data i love putting this this series together uh, it is a lot of fun and um in the next couple of weeks i'm going to put together sort of the uh i call it the the, the cold opens it's the compilation of all the uh, almost timely newsletters at least the the narrative part at the beginning because like a lot of the news links are out of date now but um that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks so stay tuned it'll be free you know, everyone can uh, can grab it um and uh, and thanks for tuning in, uh, whether you watched, read, listened to this. I appreciate you sticking around, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe out there. Take care.